Hi, Big Tractor Power fans. I'm here with Dave Getterman from John Deere, and we're going to talk about the most talked about tractor coming onto the market today, the John Deere 8RX. This tractor really caught a lot of people's attention at the end of 2019, a four-track row crop high horsepower fixed frame tractor. And there's a lot of details that Dave is going to share with us about this tractor's development and what it can do on the farm. So Dave, thank you for your time today. It's a great opportunity to, to have a walk around with someone from John Deere on the details of a big machine like this. Yeah, Jason, thank you very much for being here. And you're right, uh, 8RX has uh, created quite a lot of excitement uh, in the field, uh, as well as uh, the 8R, 8RT, and the new 7R tractors that we've introduced for model year 20. So where did the concept, four tracks, where, where did John Deere start looking at this and what makes this tractor unique? How is that achieved with the four track system? Yeah, that's a good question. So I would say a lot of the interest uh, kind of derived from the introduction of the 9RX and the 9RX Narrow, especially the 9RX Narrow's capabilities into row crop applications. Uh, we, we all know the popularity of the 8R series tractors and so it, it made sense for us and with the, the request and support of our customers uh, to look at putting a four track solution on an 8R series tractor. And that's really uh, where it came from. And there's a lot that goes into the engineering of a tractor. It's not just taking the tires and wheels off and putting on four tracks. There's a lot of development capacity and strength that has to go into having this tractor developed to go out to the field. Yeah, around the same time that we started uh, looking at the development of uh, an 8RX or a four track concept for 8R, we started seeing more aftermarket uh, solutions available for large row crop tractors. And so naturally we started looking at it uh, internally and thought what, what do we need to do to make sure that we can deliver a four track solution on a fixed frame row crop tractor that would one, perform extremely well in the field, uh, but also meet our customers' expectations for reliability. And so uh, in order to do that, we, we really built off what makes the 8R tractor unique already. And that is the structural component design of that 8R series tractor. So a tractor that utilizes the engine, uh, the engine oil pan, uh, the engine's trans, uh, the tractor's transmission, uh, all as the structural components of that tractor. So it doesn't have uh, frame rails, uh, which allows us to have a little tighter, narrower package uh, to make sure that we get the turn radius that we need, uh, but also uh, the strength of the tractor. The other thing that allows us to do is to make sure we have the proper weight split uh, for uh, a four track machine form. Uh, just like we have with 8R wheel with that engine up over the front axle, in order to make this four track machine form work, we needed to make sure our weight split was right. Having that uh, engine over the front axle allows us to do that. Let's take a look so, at some of that design that's, that's right here. I mean, there's just a big strong chassis under here and uh, just the engine and all the components that go into it. Yeah, so what you're gonna notice when you look at uh, an 8R and then the 8RX is uh, from the engine uh, oil pan up, uh, the nine liter, which has been a very popular engine for us, is gonna be pretty much the same. As you move further down, you're gonna notice that o engine oil pan structurally is different uh, than what we have on 8R. And right below that, obviously, is the all new 1700 series front axle. That's which, a big axle. That yeah, so Very our, strong looking. our largest uh, solid front axle today on, the, on our 8R wheel tractors is the 1500. Uh, and in developing the 8RX, we learned pretty quickly that it was going to take, one, a bigger axle, uh, a stronger axle, uh, but also a unique axle to make sure that we've got all of our axle ratios right, oil passages right for proper lubrication, but more importantly, the strength that that tractor was going to need um, to carry that 8RX. I'm going to just take a walk up here and take a look at the axle. You can see how thick and heavy duty it is compared to just a regular wheel tractor and how it uh, bolts right in to the frame beneath the engine. And we were talking uh, earlier just about, about this overall design, how your engine is your narrowest point in the tractor frame and how that has been successful for 25 years, you know, from that original 8000 series up to this new 8RX design. Yeah, so back in 95 when we introduced the original 8000 series, one of our goals was to make sure that we could uh, have the tightest turn radius possible uh, while, having a, uh, while working on 30 inch rows, so 60 inch centers. And so uh, by doing that structural uh, component design, it does make uh, where you want to turn, where those tires are going to turn the narrowest part of the tractor. 
uh, thus giving us the turn radius that we need. And fortunately for us, that also works well with 8RX and with the tracks. We, we've had some questions from customers, some feedback on how well does 8RX turn? Does it turn as tight as a wheel machine? And in fact, it does. Uh, and it also, uh, because of the low ground pressure, uh, turns uh, just as easy or easier than a wheel machine too. So starting with this new series of 8RX, 8R, and 8RT tractors, I've noticed that we have 8RX separated from the actual model number, which is the horsepower of the tractor. I know that I'm guilty of this. When the 8Rs first came out, I might have called it an 8370R, when you should say 8370R to indicate that horsepower and the designation of the tractor. Yeah, so the 8 series tractors are the first ones to adopt the new name and numbering structure for all of our tractors, so it's our first next generation of tractor. And so our, our goal here was switching out um, the model of the tractor, which would be your 370 from the tractor family, is really to help uh, accentuate that brand of the tractor, whether it's uh, seven, eight, or nine. Uh, customers were already calling them 8Rs, 8RTs, and now 8RX. And so it really better aligns with what customers were already doing in the field today. Uh, and it also helps us identify easier uh, which model it is. So this one, for instance, is a 370 horsepower model tractor. Well, I'm really excited about that. As someone who narrates a lot of videos about, about your tractors, I try to catch myself, but every once in a while I'll slip in a 9620R and there will be people that are quick to correct me. So this will make it a lot easier to enunciate. Yeah, sure, sure. So when you look at the models that we offer for 8RX, some, some customers have asked, well, why don't we... Uh, why don't you offer one smaller than 310? And it, it's really, it really comes down to the overall weight of the machine. Uh, if you've been around tractors a while, you know we try to target 100 pounds of horsepower to make sure that the tractor that we're selling is going to perform to the customer's expectations. Uh, this 370 that you're looking at right here is weighing in at about 44,000 pounds already, so it's got a lot of natural weight built into the tractor. And so by going any lower than 310 on horsepower, uh, we were concerned that it, it may not uh, perform to the customer's expectations, simply because the tractor weighs, uh, weighs out of line from what the horsepower is. So 310 uh, at 40,000 pounds is, is about as far as we wanted to stretch that. And it's a pretty balanced package from the front end to the back end. And while this tractor has a full set of suitcase weights on the front, it's not really necessary. The weights might be good if you're running a 24 row stack fold planter in right. cotton country, something like that, but overall, not necessary. Yeah, most customers will find, even with mounted implements, that they won't need front suitcase weights. Uh, this one was configured with them, built with them, uh, obviously, but uh, with the stability of the tracks on the rear uh, and the tracks on the front, uh, the tractor doesn't, uh, doesn't really squat or, or wobble, if you will, uh, when it's under load from the rear, and, and customers will quickly realize hey, I probably don't need that. You know, um, when you're running an 8R wheel tractor with a mounted implement, having weights on the front just helps stabilize it. And in a lot of cases, will help that tractor perform better in the field uh, when it comes to steering. Uh, they'll find that they likely won't need that on 8RX. So 
So the most important component of an 8RX are these tracks. And we have a one size track in the front and a larger in the rear. What can you tell us about the tracks? What went into the design of these to make them effective in the field and on the road? Yeah, so we had a, we had a few goals in mind when it came to uh, design an 8RX. One, we obviously wanted good flotation, so low ground pressure. Uh, we wanted the tractor to maintain a top speed of 26 miles per hour. And of course, we wanted the longevity out of the undercarriage that customers have come to expect with 9RX, 8RT, and so forth. And so, and 26 miles per hour on tracks on the road is a, is a pretty big accomplishment. I know people think, well, I can go 70 in my car or truck, right. but moving at 26 miles per hour in a tractor on tracks is, is pretty big. Yeah. What you're looking at here, uh, you, you know, when you look at 8RX, you, you automatically think that tractor is going to float really well. It's going to have low ground pressure. And in fact, it does. When you compare it to 8R wheel, 8RT, or even 9RX on narrower row crop tracks, it's going to come in at the lowest ground pressure at about 6.5 uh, PSI, which from an agronomic standpoint is huge for customers. So not only do you not have an extra set of duels going through the field, uh, but you've also got a lower ground pressure uh, to help eliminate any compaction that's going to uh, decrease their yield potential. PSI is definitely an important thing, and I know where I live in western Kentucky, a lot of farms are going to controlled traffic, running everything on 40 feet, reducing the amount of trips and passes across the field. And these tracks are a big part of that, keeping it all in one spot from planting to harvest. Yeah, and that's one reason we offer the tread settings that we do. So 76 uh, inch tread centers, uh, 80, 88, and then 120 to obviously accommodate the customers that are operating in uh, either controlled traffic situations or their, their cropping practices require uh, a narrower uh, tread spacing, spacing like 76. As we look at the undercarriage, you're gonna notice, uh, and we get some questions on why do you have two on the front, two mid rollers on the front, and three mid rollers on the rear. And really that's all driven by the weight split of the tractor. And so uh, if anyone has any, exp any experience at all with large row crop tractors, they'll know that typically that weight splits around 60-40. In this case, we're looking at about 54-46, 55-45 weight split. And so uh, by having less weight on the front axle, uh, that allows us to have a little bit shorter uh, overall front track wheelbase, uh, which in, uh, with two mid rollers uh, supports that weight uh, adequately. So we can see the mid rollers down here on the front track. And then as you move your camera up there, Jason, you'll notice that it uh, has a smaller drive wheel than the rear uh, and not a large enough drive wheel to be a friction drive system like an 8RT or a 9RT, where, where those track systems rely strictly on the uh, contact between the drive wheel and the belt. Uh, what you're looking at here with 8RX on front and rear is what we call a positive drive system. So uh, that's where the uh, drive wheel actually engages uh, the track belt uh, via the drive lugs, and, and that's what propels that track. So the drive wheel engages it, uh, versus it being a friction drive like 8RT or 9RT. I'll just point to the, the lugs here because it's a little dark under here, but you can see the, the lugs going through and where it grabs on there. Yeah. <coughs> and I know just on the outside, you have uh, kind of a top mud guard here to keep stones and debris off yep. the tractor, and then also a smaller one down here uh, to keep it from filling up the step, I imagine. Yeah, we... Uh... We've had some interesting comments on the bottom uh, fender. You know, maybe some don't like exactly how it looks, but when it comes to functionality, uh, that track whips around there pretty quickly. And in any type of muddy or wet conditions, it will, it'll throw a lot of material up on your steps. And so that's actually a pretty functional fender, even though aesthetically to some, it may take a little bit of getting used to. 
Oh, I like it. And I know if I was operating this and I didn't have to power wash for a couple hours, yeah, yeah. it's uh, definitely handy. Yeah. The other question we get to, uh, Jason, is why don't we have ILS uh, on the front axle of, of 8RX? And so I always bring that question back to them with what is ILS for on a wheel machine, right? It's design, ILS is, is designed to reduce power hop, uh, to reduce road lope, and also to improve ride quality. Well, anyone that's driven uh, a track machine in the field knows that they ride really well in the field. And unless the circumstances are extremely severe, track machines don't power hop. And so without power hop and with it already good infield ride quality, uh, that negates any uh, need for uh, ILS on the front axle. Well, I notice when I watch track tractors in the field with wheeled ones, especially in tillage, the tracks are always pulling out ahead and oftentimes lapping the wheeled tractor and that, that ride and pull is, is pretty impressive what they can provide. Yeah. So and, it, and you can see that power hop on the wheeled one when they, especially when they hit a tough spot where the tracks just kind of ease through it. Yeah. And you know, now that doesn't mean the track tractors don't uh, produce some negative ride qualities. And so to help uh, uh, mitigate some of those uh, negative ride qualities, uh, we certainly knew we needed to do something with the cab, just similar to what we did with 9RX. We've had great success with the cab suspension on 9RX, and so we looked at doing something very similar on 8RX, and, and that's what we have here, a four-corner cab suspension uh, with spring over shock, uh, manual uh, or mechanical cab suspension, so uh, a passive system is what we call it. So there's no operator adjustment, there's no controllers, there's no hydraulics, uh, no, no uh, harnesses, so it's, it's a very simple system. Uh, but ultimately, it's a, a very effective system that provides an excellent ride quality uh, on the road and in the field. And this is an all-new cab, and I can see, you know, you can see the lift here uh, just above the steps, that separation of where it kind of floats and rides on that system. Yeah, it was, it was fun talking to customers as we were developing the new tractors. They, uh, one thing that they were very vocal about was, don't, don't mess up the cab. We love the cab that we have today. So please don't mess that up, just make it better. And so we asked them what, what they wanted to see in the new cab uh, to make it better. And that's what we focused on. So we made the entry path a little bit wider to make it easier to get in and out of. Obviously lowered the door handle. We did move the HVAC system to give them a little bit more clearance uh, above their head. Uh, we've implemented the foot rest. So we've got three foot rests in the cab uh, that they can order uh, just to help relieve some of the st uh, stress off their body, especially when they're in the swivel. Uh, a new app radio, uh, touchscreen app radio uh, to make, uh, whether they're making phone calls or listening to music or whatever they're doing, maybe it's pulling up a map on that radio to, to find the next field, just making it easier for, for them to perform uh, their jobs in the field. Uh, but then I'd be remiss if I didn't mention our new seat. So it's an all new seat and on the ultimate cab, you get leather, uh, you get a massaging feature, uh, heated, ventilated, and it's also a power seat uh, just like they would have uh, in a pickup. And so uh, the next step above anything we've had and, and what the competition has when it comes to comfort uh, in the new seat. Well, can we take a quick look at the cab? And, yeah, absolutely. And I noticed, I know this has been updated a little while ago, but it's nice that there's no, I guess, corner post there, just a big wide door with good visibility and easy access into the cab. So here we can see uh, the tractor and again, you've got your buddy seat as well as some storage behind it, which is yeah, always so, handy. Well, this is actually our new fridge. So it's a new larger fi uh, fridge to uh, uh, hold your sandwiches, your drinks, uh, anything you want to keep cool there. A little bit larger, more, more volume than our previous uh, refrigerator. Oh, well, that's a nice, nice feature to have. Yeah. And then obviously uh, the new app radio that you see over here. Uh, we have a new uh, new rail over here that will help accommodate uh, any devices that a customer wants to put on it, whether it's uh, different displays. Uh, so the accessory rail there are going to make it easier uh, for them to to mount their displays if they if they so choose. And obviously uh, the Gen 4 4600 display. Uh, which we're having great success with on our current tractors. Uh, one of those things customers have, have also said, hey, we, we like that display. 
uh, let's let's not change that too much either. So they're they're used to it, and uh, it's working really well for for us and them, and uh, we're having good success there. And then there's uh, several foot pegs on here on the tractor as well. Uh, you know, you've got your peg right there. Yep. Which is helpful when you spend a lot of hours out in the field to stretch yeah. out a little bit. Customers have been asking for that uh, for quite a while now and, and happy to finally be able to incorporate those into the cab. And then uh, the one that uh, they probably weren't expecting was to have one over here on the right hand side. So when you're swiveled over to the right, watching your implement while you're going down through the field, being able to put your feet up on that uh, footrest there, uh, they've sure enjoyed that. So we've got the tractor turned on now so we can kind of see the display screens here a lot of features automotive styling in the cab a lot of function um, what should we talk about next yeah so we can talk about that automotive styling just a little bit so we wanted to we wanted to bring a cab and bring features to the cab that people already liked but also make it uh, to where it feels more like their pickup truck so as you look at the column here more automotive style controls uh, we talked about the app radio uh, just a little bit the ability to connect your phone to that um, the other thing we did when it comes to ordering the the cab packages so we've uh, before it's been more of an a la carte type uh ordering system we've we've streamlined that we've streamlined that to make it uh to where you've got three packages to choose from choose from on your cab packages and then also three packages uh, when it comes to your visibility and so uh, if, a, if a customer is looking to have more of a basic entry level package uh, for comfort right cloth seat uh, standard steering wheel uh no foot pegs and just want a good basic cab uh this they would select the the select package if they want more middle of the road want a little bit fancier seat uh a few more of the amenities we offer the premium package uh, but those customers that want everything they want leather steering wheel they want leather seat they want power seat uh refrigerator foot pegs uh everything that all the best that we have to offer on a cab, uh, they would offer, uh, they would option up for the ultimate cab. And this is the ultimate cab here. Yeah. We've so got... what we're looking at here would be uh, the ultimate cab inside. Uh, we've also split out uh, some of the uh, visibility uh, type features. So your mirrors, uh, your wipers, your sunshades, uh, and obviously your light. So while we have three cab packages, we now have three visibility packages that a customer can choose from. And so, again, and those are in select, premium, and ultimate as well. Uh, ultimate is going to give you heated mirrors, the power uh, telescoping mirrors. Uh, it's going to give you 22 LED lights, right, which is... That's put, a lot of light. <laughs> it puts out twice as much output as our current uh, or the, the outgoing 8R lights. And so, and those, again, those will be LEDs. Uh, so three packages on cabs and then three packages on visibility uh, for customers and they can mix and match those however they want. Uh, we also took it up one more level. Let's say a customer wants ultimate cab comfort, ultimate visibility, uh, and then they also want the premium activations. Customers that uh, are looking for the, the top of the line everything, we now offer the John Deere Signature Edition package. Uh, so that's just going to combine the best. So it's going to give you ultimate visibility, ultimate uh, cabin uh, comfort and convenience, and then also your premium activations. Uh, so more like your, your high-end pickup truck uh, offerings uh, for those customers that, that want it all on their new 8R, 8RX, or 8RT. And let's take a look at just some of those easy to use uh, automotive features here. Uh, the steering wheel set up very much like, like your pickup truck and it's uh, telescopic, you can move it up and down and yep. with ease. And yep, and you'll have your uh, bright lights over here on the left, obviously your turn signals. Uh, but the bigger one here is your uh, your wipers over here on the left side. So uh, more of a turn uh, turn knob, just like we have, uh, and then your ability to, to adjust uh, your uh, intermittentness. Uh, is that a word, intermittentness? You might want to delete that. <laughs> <laughs> but it, uh, let's take a look at that windshield wiper one more time. It just, you know, good, good coverage of the window. And I noticed you also have one over to the side there. And yep, over on the right-hand side. And, and then off, obviously the back on the back moving yep. too yep and all those are controlled right there uh from the column so it's uh moving them all to one uh location versus having them spread out like we did in the past the other thing i want to point out uh, on the new tractors is customers ask us not to not to change the controls too much uh so they're used to the, the controls that we have and they want to have a common feel or a familiarity with those controls and so as you as you get in at one of these new cabs, you'll notice that the, the screen layout, 
your SCVs, what we call the house keys, your auto track button, um, are all very similar to what they had today. One thing you'll notice uh, with this tractor is it does not have the new Command Pro. Uh, Jason, have you heard of Command Pro? Know what that's all about? I, I do not. I'd okay. like to learn more about it. Yep, so Command Pro, uh, we introduced it on the 6Rs um, a couple years ago, is, is our multi-function uh, drive strategy, our multi-function handle. Uh, similar to what uh, has been in the field with some of the competition uh, for several years gives us the ability to control uh, the movement of the tractors as well as uh, the implement all from one uh, handle. And so we'll, we'll capture some footage of that and that way we can, we can uh, teach you all about it. Sounds good. And I have to say that auto button, uh, which is right here, is very handy. I, I had the opportunity to drive one of these in the fall and it, it turned so tight, I wasn't ready to get the implement in the ground as quick yeah. and, and hit auto as well. So I had to loop back around, but it, it's nice to be able to hit that quickly because it, it turns, it really turns extremely tight. Yeah, uh, 8RX turns really well. Uh, there was, was some concern or hesitation from people in the field that how well does 8RX really turn and does it, more importantly, does it disturb soil or does it not disturb soil like a two-track machine form does? And uh, we're happy to say that it, it turns extremely well and has very minimal soil disturbance uh, when you're turning on your headlands. And also just uh, visiting with you here in the cab, I'm impressed just the, the visibility. I mean, it, it's very panoramic looking out here and, you know, very little obstruction. And can we, can, we'll talk about the three-point hitch in a little bit, but great view right out the back to your, your hitch area. Yeah, we, we worked hard to uh, increase the overall volume, interior volume of the cab, and, but also improve visibility. And so as we get back outside, we can look at it, but our, our after treatment uh, package has been redesigned uh, to be smaller and, and thus improving our visibility by having less obstruction out that right-hand window. And just a couple other things in the iPhone generation, we always want to be able to plug things in. And so there's uh, several USB point ports in this yep. cab and uh, a lot of connectivity yeah so we've actually split some of that out to make it easier uh, for customers to connect whether it's uh, a display up high or maybe even one further uh, down low uh, we've got multiple locations for them to connect to whether it's on the right hand fender or even now up on uh, the right hand corner post and i'll point out these to you jason these most customers if I, we didn't say something wouldn't know what those are uh, but those are for wire harnesses that come inside the cab, and those are actually for zip ties. Okay. So uh, you want to run some wires up to your displays, you can just zip tie those right to the corner post uh, nice. to keep your cab nice and clean. And as we're getting out of the cab, maybe I just want to take a look at these mirrors. Uh, they definitely stand out. You have that uh, bold green look on the uh, front side of them now, and uh, you had mentioned there's several features and options from heated mirrors, adjustable mirrors, to uh, just the regular old get out there and adjust it yourself mirror. Yeah, yep, so we'll have three different uh, options there with select, premium, or ultimate. And it is a new look for us on our mirrors. And you know people are passionate about tractors uh, when they're talking to you about the new mirrors. Uh, some like them, uh, some haven't quite gotten used to them yet, uh, but uh, it definitely brings a new sharp look the track it does and i will say another sharp look i like is this uh, large yellow decal uh, it, it stands out and it it reminds me of the the two cylinders before the 4010 and 3010 just has that classic john deere look yeah. to it for, for like people a, that really like tractors like an old 730 diesel type yeah. look yeah so the the eight series tractors are the first ones to adopt what we call idl uh, so the industrial design language of the tractor mm -hmm. uh 7r adopted some of it so it has what we call uh, the flag, the decal, uh, the new flag, uh, the new uh, bump in the hood. Uh, but ultimately our goal was to, to give the 8R a new look, one for, for our customers uh, and for our dealers uh, to have uh, a distinct new product to sell uh, while trying to maintain um, industry leading uh, performance and appearance. Well, let's get out and take a look at some more of those advancements and leading features. All right. As we're getting out of the tractor, one thing you'll notice about the new 8R and 8RX cab is the straighter door post. The previous models had a much more curved post there. And Dave, what is the what is the design change there? What advantage does this bring to the tractor? Yeah, so we mentioned earlier about opening up that floor space or that entry space. So that gives us about three more inches of, of width 
uh, about 24% greater entry path uh, for getting in and out of the cab. Oh, there's definitely a lot of room, and that's that's nice because you don't notice it until you get into the older tractor and say, ooh, that's a, that was a big change. Yeah, overall volume of the cab didn't change all that much. I think we're up around 3% or so, give or take. Uh, but it with the HVAC moved back behind the seat, uh, the corner post straightened out, it feels like a larger, more spacious cab. And just looking on the outside of the cab again, we can see that new distinct mirror and then a lot of <clears throat> a lot of lights uh, everywhere on the corners up here above the the hazard light and how many how many lights are on around that on a on a premium model yeah so you can tell uh which lighting or which visibility package the tractor has by the amount of lights it has on each corner so you can see this one only has one uh, hanging out there on the support uh, so this one would tell you it has the premium lighting package and so if it had the ultimate lighting package it would have another light and so this one would have 18 LED lights uh, on the outside. Uh, the, the ultimate package would have 22. And so it would have uh, two more lights, uh, two, two lights on each bracket on each corner. Oh, that's definitely helpful when you're running a 60 foot planter at one o'clock in the morning trying to beat that next rain shower. Yeah, and this tractor is not outfitted with them, uh, but we do also offer uh, what we call convenience lights. So right below our cab corner lights as a strip of LED lights and you'll have those on, uh, there'll be eight of them around the cab. Uh, and then actually the button would be right here. You just hit that button and those LED lights will light up 360 around the tractor. So oh, nice. whether it's, you're just going into the shop to, or into the shed to get something when it's dark or you're getting out at night, uh, you just want some good lighting. It's, it's really handy and, and uh, customers have really seemed to appreciate that. And one thing uh, before we look at the rest of the tractor, because I'm just a tractor history buff, and right now it's new and exciting, but something interesting on the door is uh, the pre-production decal uh, that's placed there, and 20 years down the road, some of them have to what does that mean? <laughs> yeah, yep, so uh, like any tractor program, we do do a limited production build, uh, get them out, start getting some test hours on them to make sure uh, that our quality is gonna be where we want it to be. And this is one of those uh, pre-production tractors. So you may have seen we had some tractors going down uh, the road or in, operating in the field with kind of a black and green camo type look before mm -hmm. we introduced them. Uh, this, this tractor very, very well could have had some of that wrap on them uh, as okay. one of the pre-production units. Well, we saw the front track. Now we're kind of working our way back. We can take a look at the rear track, which is larger. And yeah, so what you'll notice uh, when you look at the rear track of the 8RX is it shares a lot of the same design characteristics as uh, the 9RX narrow undercarriage. And primarily, you're going to notice that on the bottom portion of the track, so your, your bottom track frame. Uh, the drive wheel is obviously going to be different. Uh, as you look at the unique components of, of the 8RX, uh, a lot of that's around the drive train, whether it's the axles um, or the actual undercarriage itself. Just like the front axle that we pointed out, it is a positive drive system, so where the drive wheel does engage uh, the drive lugs uh, on that track belt. And I'll try to just point it here. Looking back, you can see where it catches that rubber that's coming up here in the uh, in the track. Yeah, and you'll notice on the bottom, we've got three, three mid rollers. And one thing about uh, a John Deere undercarriage, whether it's an 8RX or a 9RX, uh, the, the mid rollers and the idlers run uh, they're an oil bath design, and, and fortunately uh, for everyone involved, that's, that's a, a life of the tractor uh, design. So we do have periodic checks, 1,500-hour uh, checks on that oil in the mid-rollers and the idlers, uh, but no, no, no oil change interval on those. And so just check it every 1,500 hours, run it, and, uh, and keep going. Great the other, feature. The other thing you'll notice on the bottom is uh, the rubber isolation uh, to help improve uh, ride quality, uh, to eliminate any of that uh, vibration you would typically get uh, through the mid rollers on a track undercarriage. Well, we'll walk back here and take a look at the hitch system and three point hitch, and also uh, we'll be able to get a good look at the cab suspension. Yeah, with any track machine, uh, when you have such a long footprint or what we call a track wheelbase uh, between the front and rear idler, uh, that does force that rear idler back further uh, than what you would be uh, accustomed to on a wheel tractor. And so in order to maintain, maintain our turn radius and to keep the track out of the tongue of the implement, we actually had to move that whole hitch and drawbar assembly back uh, 
to make sure that it is is out of line from hitting our tracks and that's exactly what we've done here that's a handy feature because i know i see on some of these bigger implements uh companies put the model number and a nice fancy decal on the hitch and after a couple of years you see that all just black tire treads and scraped right. off there right yeah and and with tires, uh, tires are a little bit more forgiving and, and running into a, a tongue isn't maybe as uh, severe or damaging uh, to a tire. Uh, but when it comes to track machines, you don't have that sidewall give. And it's, it's very important to keep those tracks out of the tongue of, the, of those implements. So for, uh, for 8R, 8RX, um, and 8RT, we still offer the 20,000 pound hitch. Uh, 8RX and 8R have the, the ability to get 85 gallons per minute out of six SCVs. Uh, and then obviously uh, your PTO options, uh, pretty stationary for large row crop tractors. But, but Jason, what I wanna point out to you, this is a, a good view of, of one, the, just the ability to get in and work on the tractor with the 120 inch tread spacing. I can walk right in here and you're standing behind the hitch. Yeah, so it uh, gives you, uh, whether, you know, maybe it's even cleaning out some debris, uh, some buildup on the axle or whatever it is, or just power washing the tractor. Uh, that's one thing that customers have realized on, on the 9RX 120 uh, tractors, the 120 inch tread spacing is just the ability to, for one, maybe just check your inner mid rollers or uh, get, out, get in and clean the tractor or work on the tractor. Sure, good visibility, good access down here. And I also notice uh, coming back here, I can see all the suspension features on the cab here with the, you know, giving that good ride quality. Yep, and as we talked, that's that mechanical cab suspension. Uh, we learned a lot, we're learning a lot about cab suspensions and, uh, and this is no exception. It, there's, there's a lot more that goes into designing a cab suspension than, than we probably initially realized. And uh, from fighting noise to, to ensuring good ride quality uh, a lot goes into it, and then and then the fact that you've got to package it around axles and and drive lines and fuel tanks, it's and your engine, you're kind of putting a greenhouse on top of <laughs> yeah, right. you know, fire pit. So it's a um, lot to lot to engineer. Yeah, and that's that's one thing that makes 8RX all that more unique. Uh, when you look at the shared components between an 8R wheel and an 8RX, uh, there really aren't very many shared components. Uh, the cab obviously uh, would be. Uh, the fenders are a little different. Uh, the engine, really the engine block, like we mentioned earlier, and then the transmission are really your primary shared components. Um, obviously some of your hitch and hydraulic components. Other than that, uh, when you're taking a look at the axles, uh, your mid frame, your fuel tanks, uh, your engine uh, oil pan, your front axle, 8RX was definitely uh, intended to be a, a dedicated four track machine form. Now, where are the, the fuel tanks and, and all that? Um... Yep, so they're gonna be located in the same proximity as a wheel tractor, uh, right there on the center section of the tractor. And that, that fuel tank will uh, be on both sides and, and kind of intertwines uh, over and, and through the middle frame section. Uh, and we're looking at 225 gallons of, of fuel capacity and, and just about 10 gallons of, of DEF capacity to ensure that we can run. Uh, and here's your, this is your diesel exhaust fluid uh, yep, right there. there. Yep. And then yep. your diesels right up here. Good, yep. good and easy to reach. So Dave, what can you tell us about the exhaust system on this tractor? Yep, so uh, final tier four compliant. Uh, you'll notice uh, whether you're sitting in the cab or you're down on the ground that our exhaust after treatment uh, has been uh, reduced in overall size. So we've streamlined it a little bit. Uh, we've also included the DOC in the, and the DPF into one unit uh, before they were uh, separate units, which uh, caused us to have a little bit larger package. And, and now that they're in one uh, confined unit, it allows us to, to condense those down and, and get a, a more streamlined uh, tighter package uh, for better visibility and it is overall. Uh, you don't really even notice it in the cab. It's the 
definitely blended well into the design. Yep. And so, uh, and then obviously right, right below those will be your, your right hand steps, uh, with a, with a platform on the right hand side. We've had a lot of questions about, uh, why is there the new integrated receiver on the right front corner of the cab? You know, we've had, had it on the front of the cab for almost 20 years now. And so customers are obviously accustomed to that. And so why is it on the right hand corner of the cab? And, and really it just came down to real estate, uh, both on top of the cab and, and within the cab structure itself. And that's where it made the most sense for us to put it. It obviously doesn't matter where it's at on the tractor, so long as we, you have the correct measurements in there uh, for the tractor, uh, for the location of the receiver on the tractor, uh, and, and also the implement that you're pulling. You'll notice on the, on the back corner of the cab, uh, you'll see the RTK antenna uh, right there sticking out of the cab. Uh, you'll have handrails there too. Another nice benefit of putting the receiver on the right hand front corner is uh, to access it, which for the most part shouldn't need to very often, uh, but you just climb right up uh, the right side of the cab and you can access it right there on the top of the cab. So that just comes right from the factory. I know a lot of times you buy your other kind of the, kind of looks like a brain, the 6,000 receiver that comes separately in a box. And yep. so now this is coming right on the tractor. and Right. Yep, fully integrated uh, receiver, and if a customer does have and want to use their current receiver, uh, they can still plug it in. Uh, we have a bracket that goes on the front middle of the cab. They can plug it in, and, and their receiver will actually trump uh, the integrated receiver. Okay. Uh, you know, Jason, one thing we haven't really talked too much about is transmissions. Uh, we talked a little bit about our new drive strategy with Command Pro. Uh, Command Pro is currently only available on IVT transmissions. Uh, but one, one transmission I want to make sure that we point out is, is the new E23. Uh, I say new, it's been out for five years, uh, but to some people it may be new. Now that E23 power shift transmission uh, is the only uh, power shift you can get on an 8RX. So the 16 speed uh, is not available. So it's either the E23 or an IVT. Uh, the E23, if for the customers that aren't aware, uh, has some of the same IVT-like characteristics, so three modes of operation, whether it's full auto, custom, or manual. I like to call manual mode kind of like that 4028 speed or 4960 15 speed. Uh, for customers that want to run it, uh, just like a traditional power shift, they can do that uh, in manual mode. But if a customer wants to operate more like an IVT, where the tractor uh, manages the engine and the gear based on the desired speed the operator set, they can do that with E23. Uh, and it also has auto clutch, so the ability to, to stop the tractor just by depressing the clutch, uh, whether it's uh, coming up to an intersection, uh, filling up a, a trailer uh, during harvest or whatever it is. Well, it sounds like some good features and the IVT just kind of gives you an infinite variable transmission. Is it just uh, less shifting and more go? Yeah, IVTs are very smooth. Uh, there are some applications where maybe you're operating at a really low speed but need a certain RPM. Maybe your, your implement requires a certain RPM at a very low speed. Uh, and some guys just like the feel of, of the IVT. And I think that'll be even, even more accentuated uh, with Command Pro. It, the Command Pro is so smooth and so comfortable. I think it'll also pull more people over to the IVT as well. Uh, one thing you won't notice is we don't have an IVT available on our 410 models, whether it's uh, 8R wheel, 8RT, or even the 8RX. And, and there's really a pretty simple reason for that. Uh, the IVT that we currently have in the market today, we're just simply not comfortable taking it up uh, to 410 and delivering on the expectations our customers have for reliability uh, out of our products. And so that's why we've uh, selected not to put it uh, in the 410 model. Well, I'm sure like all things, good things come to those who wait. So we'll probably down the road see some upgrades, but I, I have to say, Seeing E23 and IVT tractors in the same field, planting corn, both great, great features, and uh, they do a great job. Yeah, you're exactly right. Uh, great things come to those who wait. So Dave, we, we talked about the Green Star receiver and the RTK, which I'm gonna just zoom in here so people can see it. It's uh, very well integrated into the cab. It always amazes me uh, riding in these that you can put on a feature and see that 17 satellites in our space are uh, tracking this tractor and help guide it. But I also noticed there's a small uh, kind of round or almost octagonal disc um, in front of that GPS. What, what is that on the, the cab? Yeah, so uh, we've replaced our previous uh, rotary beacons with new LED 
uh, beacons. So there'll be one on the back of the cab and two on the front corners of the cab. And those are just your, your fluorescent orange uh, rotary beacons uh, for transport. I know I've seen a lot on combines over the years and things, tree branches catch those and all of a sudden you don't have that orange globe on there anymore. It's more just something spinning around in there. So yeah, I'm sure right. it helps to lower it. Yeah, yeah, they're a little bit more compact. Uh, the LED makes them really bright. Uh, and obviously uh, the reliability of those LEDs has been really good. And one other thing uh, that's probably helpful when you're going into transport, and we can walk up and look at the grill. One of the options on this tractor is to have cameras and you can have a camera that mounts right here on the, the front of the tractor. Yep, so uh, if you get the ultimate visibility package, uh, you'll get a, a camera both on the front and the rear of uh, 8R, 8RT, or 8RX for those same exact reasons that you pointed out. And it could be as simple as pulling into the shed and you just want to see how close you are uh, to the other tractor combine or implement in front of you. Maybe you're in transport, uh, maybe you're backing up to an implement on the rear. Uh, just having those cameras makes it really convenient for some of those activities. And I can imagine that having on the nose, if you're pulling out of a laneway, coming onto a road, it's kind of helpful to get a little extra visibility of what's going on in front of you as you're pulling out on into traffic. Yeah, that's exactly right. Dave, thank you for the thorough walk around tour of this tractor. I've had a chance to film it in the field a few times, but there's always questions or things I worry about leaving out. I usually use a sales brochure to get the specs, but it's helpful to talk to the person that directly knows what's gone into this and all the big and small features that make this a good tractor. Uh, one, I guess, final question is, when is this tractor available? We saw it was a pre-production on the door. When can people actually order one of these and expect to put one in the field? Yeah, so we've been taking orders uh, for these since uh, about December time frame. Uh, we'll start building these tractors in April. Uh, they'll start uh, shipping uh, sometime in May, but uh, order bank is open now. So if a customer is interested in one, uh, they can certainly go see their, their dealer, uh, price one out, and uh, be, uh, be available sometime later this year. And then I know the, the big question from viewers always is, how much does this tractor cost? What, what kind of price range are we looking at to, to put an 8RX on a farm? Yeah, customers like to talk about price, uh, right? And uh, happy to talk about that. So uh, you're gonna see a, a base price, a, a list base price, uh, starting around 480,000, uh, depending on the model that you get and the features that you get, uh, can take that uh, up to about $580,000. Well, that's definitely a big investment for a farm, but you also have to think, what can this do for you in the field? Right, and there's yeah. a lot of features and riding in one of these uh, on a farm that was using a 9RT as well, they put the same implement on this tractor and they found that it was doing the same amount of work with uh, actually a little more ease. So there's a lot of possibilities for, for purchasing a tractor like this. Yeah, so uh, uh, the flotation, low ground pressure is an obvious uh, uh, first thing that the customers are going to notice. Uh, what they will be most surprised with is how well these tractors hook up and pull uh, from a, just a straight traction standpoint, traction through a turn with the ability to turn the front axle. Uh, these tractors pull extremely well uh, while giving them the flotation and low ground pressure that they're looking for. Again, thank you for your time, and I, I can't wait to see more of these out in the field, doing grain cart work, tillage, planting, a lot of possibilities. Yep, Jason, thank you very much. Uh, it's been a pleasure talking with you. Thank you. Well, we've had a great tour from Dave, and now we're going to climb in the cab and take this tractor for a little bit of a test drive. We saw a little movement from the uh, cab suspension there. Yes. I can see those tight turning tracks up front. It's a 
14 foot door. Which is about as big as we need. We can see a John Deere 2660 VT tillage tool. That looked pretty good behind this tractor. It's very smooth right I know a lot of people always talk about taking tracks down the road and it uh, feels just as nice as the wheels. Yeah, and that's really where the cab suspension comes in on any track machine is just to help eliminate a lot of those bumps and vibration that you get from a harder surface or a hard obstacle, uh, whether it's in the field or, or on a hard paved road. Jason. Well, would it be right to get behind the wheel and take uh, it for a spin? Absolutely. All right. All right, so I'm in the driver's seat. Usually I'm the one filming, so it's always a rare opportunity to actually drive one. And how do I adjust the seat for my height? Yep, so just right there on your armrest. And then underneath the cover of that armrest there, you've got uh, some more controls for the seat. And so you've got your heated seat, uh, ventilated seat, and you've got some adjustability both uh, on your back, on your on your actual seat self, and then the back ones there would be your heat. So uh, all all types of nice features for for keeping operators comfortable. Sure. And then which one is the massaging seat? Yeah. So you can hit either one of these here, but I would probably go with that one right there. Okay. Yeah. And you'll. Now, that's be nice if you're out here for 10, <laughs> 14 hours a day. Yeah, when the massaging feature's on and the customer's not used to it or had experience with it, it kind of catches them sure. off guard a little bit. All right, well, we'll take the tractor for a spin here. All right, yep, so this one's got uh, just the what we call the right-hand reverser IVT. Okay. Uh, so no Command Pro in this one and no left-hand reverser, just a standard right-hand uh, IVT controller there. And you just put your, uh, hit the foot, center foot thing there your, oh, this one here. Uh, yeah for your steering okay. that, steering that. column and it'll lock. come down and lock yep let it on down a little bit and then you can adjust it uh, we've got another adjust right here on the right hand side and that's going to be your um, fine tuning your tilt okay. and then also your, your uh, telescoping feature all right that feels good all right so we just clutch it in there yep so you don't you don't actually have to clutch you just okay take it out and uh, uh Put it up there into uh, F1. So we'll just bring this over here. And yep. And no then, clutch, and well, there we go. Yeah. So as you uh, you get going forward there, so if you look at your your corner post display, it'll show uh, 12 miles per hour in orange. Mm. That's going to be your desired speed. So it's not moving very fast right now because your throttle's still uh, at low idle. Okay. So as you bring that up, this tractor is going to going to want to go to 12 miles per hour. If you want to adjust that down, all you've got to do is simply rotate that dial uh, counterclockwise. Okay. And it will. Uh, and that's the dial here. Yep. Just dial that to wherever you want it, and then the tractor will work to maintain that speed based on your engine load. Uh, engine load being placed on the tractor. Very easy to use. A lot different than my John Deere 8850. <laughs> <laughs> do you have an 8850? I do. Oh, you do. Oh, yeah. huh, interesting. Uh, one of my favorite tractors uh, from John Deere's lineup. So, this is just a great, great riding tractor, and we're in a parking lot, but very maneuverable. Yeah. So as you can see, we're we're traveling almost 11 miles per hour, and, and since we don't have an implement or very much load on the tractor at all, our RPMs are still staying staying around 1,200 RPM. Uh, obviously, if there was a load, it would uh, raise your RPMs and adjust the transmission accordingly to uh, uh, make sure we're going to pull the implement uh, at our desired speed. I really like how it, you know, tight it turns as we come up to one of these lights. You can, so you can move right around it pretty easy. And the one thing you should notice too is there's no vibration in the cab. You might see a little bit of vibration maybe on the hood or on the exhaust system. 
Uh, but the cab suspension isolates the no, operator it, from. It feels great in the seat. I can actually see the muffler, um, you know, on the outside. But you're not not experiencing that in the cab at all. Yeah, and that's that's some of the benefits of that cab suspension working for us. And we also made some updates to our 7R and 8R cab suspension. So we, on the wheel machines, uh, have had a hydraulic uh, cab suspension historically. Uh, but moving forward for the new model year 20 tractors, that's also adopting some of the same technology as this cab suspension where it's a, a passive uh, two-point uh, cab suspension uh, with uh, spring over shock uh, mechanical cab suspension. And the performance of it uh, has also improved. Now one thing that's not available on 8RX is the new active seat too. So that's, a, that's an electronic uh, version of the active seat so going away from the hydraulic active seat and uh, adopting a new electronic active seat uh, for a few reasons as we looked at uh, the new 7 and 8 series tractors uh, one thing we wanted to do was further improve our reliability or our quality of the tractors and one way we're doing that is by eliminating as many potential leak points as possible uh, I just mentioned the cab suspension, that's one example. The active seat is another. And we've also introduced uh, to these tractors a new, what we call the HSSV, which is a hydraulic uh, selective steering valve. Valve, And what that does is it combines your priority valve, uh, your steering valve, your uh, auto track valve, and then if the tractor is equipped with ACS, it'll also include that valve. Uh, to, uh, to primarily uh, eliminate as many connection points and lines in the, in the tractor as possible. And so we've uh, been able to eliminate a tremendous amount of uh, line, line length and also connection points on both 7R and 8R just to try to further improve our reliability of the tractors. A lot of great features and I can also feel just kind of adjusting as we're going across the rolling parking lot here. How much time have you spent in a 8RX, Jason? Well, I would say maybe about 30 minutes so far. It's, um, but it's been a nice tractor. I got to run it in the fall with a 2100 inline ripper, and that you know, it was just great, great traction. And, uh, really nice, tight turns, and going right back on that next pass. That's why I can't wait to see it on a, on a corn planter and see what it can do. Yeah, the, there haven't been many applications where 8RX hasn't really shined. Uh, you know, grain carts is certainly one of them. It's got a higher cap height than the wheel tractors does, uh, but obviously the, the flotation and traction it gets, especially if it's a wet fall, 8RX really shines on a grain cart. It's obviously a, a great planter tractor. Uh, it will, it'll surprise people in tillage, especially heavy tillage, how well it pulls and gets traction. And uh, for the guys running mounted implements, when you pick up that implement, the, to have a tractor not not squat or bobble uh, and, and just feel very planted uh, is going to be really attractive for the guys running mountain. Animals. Well, thank you for the opportunity to drive this, and uh, I hope Big Tractor Power viewers will find all the details informative and just can't wait to see these out in the field. Well, Jason, we appreciate everything you do for agriculture and uh, certainly appreciate you taking some time uh, to be here with us to look at our new tractors and ask us a lot of the questions we've been wanting to answer uh, and we just really appreciate what you do so keep up the good work well thanks it's exciting to get to drive one